Ronnie's fans will always be loud and proud by his resilient memory and we connect all the time with his unbelievable voice and music. He was and always will be my friend, my mentor and my hero for all he did. So let the night stand up and shout for the one and only Ronnie James Dio. Oh yeah. He changed my life. He really did. He was, you know, by the time that I started playing with Dio, I had been doing this for about 25 years. And then I thought that I had learned everything, but no, with Ronnie, I went to a whole new level with him. You know, musicianship, creativity, humanity. He was the best. Ronnie James Dio, one of the greatest singers of all time, uh, a very generous and sweet man who would give, you know, all of his time and energy and love and attention to do good things. I remember being, I, I don't know, 13 or 14 years old and seeing stand up and shout live on like Don Kirshner's rock concert on Friday night and it just you know it makes you want to become a musician you see something like that and it's so moving and inspiring that you're like oh my god that's what I want to do for the rest of my life well Ronnie James Dio as an individual was he's from upstate New York where I'm from and uh, he's I gotta say, out of all the rock stars that I've ever met, he's definitely one of the, he was just the nicest and the most gracious and, and would always take time out to talk to fans or to talk to anybody. And when I met him, I didn't know what to expect and obviously being a big fan. Uh, and he was everything I ever expected and then more. But I've taken that upon as my own personal mission to keep his way alive the way he was. You've heard all the stories of the things that he's done and who he was, and as far as I'm concerned, who he is. His way did not die with him. And so I invite you to join me, because there's times when he knew how to just make, he'd look around the room, and you know how that was when you're backstage. You felt like that kid who had the, the golden ticket and the chocolate Bar. You know, we were with Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. You had the keys to the kingdom, and you were going to go into the kingdom and meet the king. And what does he do? He turns it all around and becomes your servant. What can I do? Can I, are you hungry? Can I make you a drink? Can I do something for you? And just blew people away with kindness. That man up there, like Sheila was talking about, that scary, dark man was the kindest, most wonderful person in the world and he would blow people's minds with kindness and make the least of the people in the room, the one who would never got picked for the football team in high school, never got noticed by the girls, and turn him into the most. And I know because I was one of them. So join me, and someday something will come up, a situation will arise where you too can do that. You can be that for someone. He was an amazing, magical person, irregardless of his amazing vocal talent, but just him as a person, was, he was and still is in all of our hearts. The king of rock and roll, the, the lord of metal, he brought uh, so much spirit and, uh, and still continues to bring you know, that spirit in everybody. Uh, as a youngster growing up in Los Angeles and seeing Ronnie and, and seeing all of his creations from music to the, all of the great things he brought to the stage, uh, just he brings everything to rock and roll. And for me, he just, in my heart, just the spirit of it brings me out and makes me want to do it every night still. So. For me, the most memorable experience. Uh, so our singer of our band played uh, bass with Ronnie on the uh, last two, I think last two records or so, last two tours. Um, for me, was going to his house, meeting him on a New Year's Eve, and then going to a gig about three months later and have him come up to me and say, "Hey, Chris, how you doing?" And just, you know, having the mindset just to remember who I was, you know. It's a class. That's way cool. Yeah, class act. And for me, you know, I uh, I was on tour with him when Alice and Dio toured together. And I remember going down to the hotel bar really late at night and there was nobody there, but he was sitting by himself with just dinner, just eating dinner by himself. And he goes, same thing, hey, Calico. I go, hey, and he goes, come join me. I go, oh, no, I went, oh, come on. So we just sat there and we ate dinner at like the middle of the night. 
somewhere in Europe. It was so great. But a class act, wonderful man. You know, I heard Heaven and Hell by Ronnie, and, and so Dio, Rainbow, and uh, Sabbath with, with Ronnie were the soundtrack to my youth and my creativity. So when I heard, sing me a song, you're a singer, I broke down and cried because I knew that I could do it. He's telling me, do this, you have to, this is who you are. And it helped me reclaim myself and my self-expression in the midst of a really dry atmosphere where everybody was going in different, you know, different directions yes. and telling me, you can't do this, it's not stable, you're strange, or you're a musician, whatever, good luck. Right. And here we are today, I'm going on that stage at seven o'clock because I didn't give up because of Ronnie. Ronnie was a fearless leader. He was always right, even when he changed his mind. And so you dare not end up in a controversy with him especially on the subject of religion. He hated religion. He saw the man-made flaws in it, and he exploited them. And man-made religion has no effect over life and death. So I want to quote Ronnie real quick here. And a little white shape looked down at me, said, heaven is where you ought to be. And then a big black shape looked up to me and said, hell is where you ought to be. Some of us witnessed angels and demons battle over his special soul through an extra eight hours of his life, awaiting that decision about heaven and hell. But Ronnie was no fool. When facing the real God, he changed his mind. So religion, religion is man-made, God is not. And he made a fearless decision and therefore is securely in heaven. And so it goes on and on. It's heaven and hell. Thank you. Ronnie, you know, his music, as a musician, he's really a big inspiration. And, and just his whole attitude. And he's a very generous person, very thoughtful person. And yes. so aside from, you know, the, I guess, the how people see him as a performer, just as a human being, he was exceptional in how he cared about uh, people and and Wendy's the same. You know, learning from him, how he, you know, he treats people, not just fans, people, you know, and dealing with things. And um, he had a tremendous memory and a knack for remembering situations and people's names. He, and it, it was really cool. He wasn't false at all. He just remembered. You know, it was an incredible uh, attribute he had. You know, um, I don't know, I just really miss him. I miss him every day. I was a kid growing up listening to his music. Yes. Um, I was just a huge fan of his, obviously. All the bands he played in, huge impact on me and my friends, big inspiration, influence and everything. A little bit later in life, I got in a band myself and then find myself on tour with him, yes. just kind of completely beside myself, you know. So a lot of times you say you never want to meet your heroes because you know, you have them at such a high pedestal sometimes, they, you don't know what to expect and you don't see them as human. But he was like the most human person you could ever meet, just super genuine, down to earth. So kind. Amazing person, just so cool. No, no weird ego thing at all. Just an amazing, amazing person. I'm one of the luckiest guys in the world. You know why? I got to see Ronnie's backside every night. But besides that, behind me were big monitors with Ronnie's voice roaring through every night. And it was just so inspiring and amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm a lucky guy to be part of this and, and to work with Ronnie and Wendy and the bands we've been in together. So I'm really fortunate. Yeah, I love them. I miss them. I think of them every day, too. It's the weirdest thing in the world, but every day. No, it put him on rock and roll. I mean, he, he, just, he was larger than life. What a voice. Song stand up and shout, soundtrack of my youth. Put that on anytime I wanted to go out partying or wanted to go and wreck a place or fighting or drinking. Yeah. Turn that up, crank Ronnie up. Pure heavy metal, pure rock and roll. Right. It's a real deal. It was a real deal. Yeah. yeah, that voice. Oh, incredible! So much soul, so much power. Right. So much attitude. Right. Just right. incredible. We were very, very close uh, from the very beginning. I joined Deep Purple in '73, and Ronnie came out with us on tour mm -hmm. when he was in Elf. Yes. And immediately we became very, very close friends. Yes. We were friends, but we also really loved each other's work, so it was a beautiful thing. 
there's this place called the Hyatt Regency. You know, it's like one of those um, hotels, but the big tall tower ball rotating right. restaurant. And we went over there. You know, of course, we went early in the day trying to get autographs, and you know, nobody there. Hell, they weren't sound checking. Right. But you know, back then you didn't know none of that stuff. And so uh, we we went to the bar next door, and yeah. uh, we're hanging out. And Ronnie was there, and he gave all of us like the time of day, Amazing. hung out with us, super great, cool guy. I mean, he just, you know, made even the, the to experience that beforehand and then go into the show, he just made you love everything even more. Uh, you know, the first word that just came to my mind was excellence. You know, he oh, really was, cool. he always was excellent. Everything he did was top notch, full tilt. Um, and, and that includes friendship. I mean, he was an incredible friend, really, really close, dear friend. So, yes. um, but he, he set a high standard and a high bar that, you know, I think we all strive to do, and, and that's great. Um, I think he meant a lot to me about somebody who was small, because yeah. I'm small, yeah. and, um, but yet strong. Right. Like the strongest voice ever that can knock oh, down walls. That, that voice. You know, so I think that I, I I yearn to be like that, you know, and uh, be, I know I'm a, a small person in stature, but I want to have a big voice, and I also want to be unique as a singer, and you that are. was the thing he is, yeah. you know, he just had, I mean, there was no mistaking his voice, I mean, you heard it, you knew it was him, and it was immediate. He was uh, just an icon for, for fans around the world, and just, just uh, all around good human being. I wouldn't... He put me out there, Ronnie. I, when I was working with Ronnie, um, he really believed in what I was doing and yeah. believed that that I had more to give than what I was giving. And he would always pull the best out of me and push me. He, I was like, I'd be like, Ronnie, you know, what do you think about if I do it like this, like that? He's like, make it, make it special, make it your own, be, be amazing. You know, he, like, he really made everybody better. You know, yes. that's the bottom line. Yes. I was always, and to this day, I'm drawn to great singers. I have to hear great singing in any music that I like. Or not necessarily great singing, but singing that appeals to me, just the quality of singing. So there, in that department, there are a few people that can touch him to what he did. Right. But then, years later, when I got to know him personally, um, what he meant to me was just a really, really good friend somebody I said here's how I can definitely how I can phrase this I've been doing radio TV now for over 35 years yeah. and I'm very well aware of the people that I have relationships with because of what I do and I'm in a position to help them and that's what it's about and that's fine I am all good with that right and then there are people that I know that if I was flipping burgers tomorrow would still be there for me right that was deal so that's what he meant to me it was it was a true bond it was a, tr a true friendship and uh, it's something you know I, I think about him I miss him all the time and it does not feel like it's been 10 years by it's any stretch Ronnie James Dio was a very welcoming presence. Like when you went to a, see Dio in concert, he made you feel like you were friends with a stranger next to you. Right. And like, you know, you'd go see Dio in concert and you wouldn't know anybody, you mm -hmm. know, at the show. Right. But you would look around and he had a, a way of making you all feel like one person. Right. And a rock and roll fan. And, and that's something that that I learn from him when I go on a stage. I want everybody to feel like we're all together. Wonderful. You know, Dio, Dio yeah. was like that. Honestly, he, he has inspired me, but he has inspired so many, not only because he was a wonderful singer, but also by his generosity. He was a very generous man with his love. And um, all I can say is I love you, Ronnie. It's, that's all I can say when I think of that. I know it's very short, but it's the truth. Ronnie James Dio, huge influence on me, uh, and a personal friend, uh, miss him terribly, greatest heavy metal singer of all time, and such a sweet, genuine dude. Great person to hang with, so lucky to have known him for, for the time that, that, that I did. Ronnie James, man, the most powerful metal singer of all time, operatic in, a, in, a, in his uh, approach, you know? Like you, right? I do my best. I know Ronnie James. Ronnie was probably the best metal singer or singer anyway um, of all time. Um, he was one of my best friends ever. He was a great guy. As you know, he loved his fans more than anybody else I know. Um, it's been a tough year for us. 
Uh, I know he'll be looking down or up at us from wherever he is. Cheers, Ronald. <laughs>